This conference will now be recorded. I brought mine. Welcome everybody, we've got a full house, this is awesome. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, the Mayor Andrew Dawson, do hereby call to order this meeting of the Sedalia City Council on this 18th day of March, part of the 2023-2024 session. Let us proceed with purpose and dedication to the, to the values that guide our city. This meeting is now called to order. Uh, first item we have on our agenda is prayer, followed by a pledge of allegiance. So, Chaplain Matson, you have the floor. Would you stand as able and join me in our invocation? Dear Lord and Father of us all, we come to you this evening to ask your guidance as the Sedalia City Council, Mayor, Administrators, staff, and council members meet to hear about, discuss, and make decisions for the betterment of our community, its citizens. We are grateful for their dedication and service to our city. We ask your protection for all of our first responders, police, fire, sheriff, EMTs, hospital staffs, ambulance service, all who work 24 seven to serve and protect us often at their own peril. We are grateful for the United States of America, our constitutional republic, for which so many thousands have fought and died to create and preserve for these 247 years. We ask your blessing and protection for all military and civilians serving our country today, both here and throughout the world, protecting our way of life, keeping us free from threats from without and sadly threats from within. And now I think we might remember tonight the life of Barbara Hayden, one of the great, great contributors to this community. Her life was a great one, and we should remember that. And of course, we remember Bob and, and the family. And now as we leave tonight, please protect us and our loved ones. Keep us from harm until we meet again. And all this is prayed in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Robinson? Yes. Oldham is absent. Marshall? Here. Bogus? Here. Hiller? Here. Cross? Here. Foster? Here. Bliss? Here. Ladies and gentlemen, as we move forward in tonight's agenda, we approach two significant public participatory segments. First, we will discuss the proposed fiscal year 2024-2025 budget, followed by a hearing on the Midtown West 50 Tax Increment Financing Plan. Before we commence, allow me to outline the protocol for tonight's public comments. I invite those wishing to contribute to step forward when the public comment portion is open. State your name and address for the record, and share your views within the three-minute allotted time frame. Please be reminded this is not an occasion for back-and-forth discussion with counsel nor an opportunity for inquiry. This is a moment for your perspectives to be heard, for counsel to listen, and your thoughts to be duly entered into the public record. We ask that all comments remain focused and respectful and relevant to the matters at hand, the adoption of our city's budget, and the implications of the Midtown West 50 TIF plan. With that, Administrator Shaw has the floor to lead us into this matter, uh, the adoption of the 2024-2025 budget. Yeah, great. Well, I appreciate the, the, the great crowd that we have. This is unusual for us, but uh, we set aside this time every year uh, for any public comment to uh, come forward and speak directly to council before they adopt or before they consider adopting the budget. This is the second time that we uh, specifically invite public for public input onto the budget. Uh, the first time is, is uh, in January, late December, somewhere around in there, we always ask for public input into the strategic planning process. 
The strategic planning process really for us starts in about October where we have each one of our departments come forward and, and give a uh, detailed presentation of their strategic plan for the next coming year and beyond and uh, particularly any new initiatives. Then pr culminating from that, we sit down with council, usually the first or second Saturday of January, and go through a strategic planning process. That strategic planning process then gives, gives the staff direction to build the budget around and uh, sets those priorities. Uh, from that, staff has been working um, uh, since then very hard on pulling together that budget. And then um, we bring that back for really the three meetings in February. We have uh, uh, details of going over that budget with council and particularly the council work session, which is typically the last Monday of February. Uh, since then, we've had, a, had another meeting that we went through uh, line by line with council of those, uh, those items. Um, with that, I know uh, Councilwoman Bogus has, uh, has some things that she wants to share from her perspective as far as uh, at least one item that's in the budget. Uh, thank you, City, <coughs> Excuse me, city Administrator. The, I have a concern and the constituents that put me in this position uh, the second ward city council person has a concern as far as the placement of the next new fire station here in Canada, Missouri. We still believe that there needs to be more meetings, there needs to be more talk about the placement of that fire station. As we know right now, both fire stations that we have are on the south side of town and the north side of town, be it northeast side, northwest side, central north side, they're saying, why are you not doing something on this side of town? So I just want to let everybody know, the council know, and, and the public know, that I am 100% behind discussing where that next station will be at. If we approve this budget tonight, I am in, in the understanding of the approval of the budget only says, yes, we know this is how much it's going to cost. This is a roundabout of what it's going to cost to build another station and to do other things. It is not a final word of where that fire station is going to be at. Great. All right. Thank you, uh, Councilman Boggs. Does the council have any other items they'd like to discuss before we open the public hearing? All right. Mm -hmm. Having heard none, we will now open the public comment portion with regards to the fiscal year 2024-2025 budget. <coughs> Please step to the microphone, state your name, your address, and you'll be allotted three minutes to speak with regards to it. Come on up. Hi, uh, my name is Estelle Frazier. I live at 405 West Henry. And I have a safety concern. You know, we're coming up on the tornado season. And the people of the north part of the city have no place to go so that when the tornado comes to be safe. So I would like, you know, to see that. Um, Tornado shelter viable for to be used. Um, a lot of times when um, before it was it had gotten water in it, it was locked. We couldn't get in it. They had no chairs in it for the people to sit in it. So I would like to, you know, for the people on the north side of the town to be safe. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Frey. Anybody else? Good evening. My name is Alona Bogus reed I live at 802 North Missouri Avenue in Sedalia, and I just wanted to piggyback off of what Councilwoman uh, Bogus had mentioned about the fire station. We do need one on the north side of town, especially now with the Vidoc being closed. If um, a fire happens, how is the fire department going to get to us in time before we lose our property or even our families and our lives? Um, my mother's house, the house that I was born and raised in, was uh, de destroyed by fire about four or five years ago. And that could happen again because the homes are old over there. And um, I just wanted to give another example 
Most of you know Mrs. Loretta Emerson. She's very special to me. She's 95 years of age. She lives alone. She lives on Jefferson Street, just a couple of blocks north of the railroad tracks. And from Montauk all the way to Washington, there is absolutely no homes there at all. Her house is the only one. So if her house were to become fire en engulfed, you know, she could lose her life. And that would really, really upset me just because the Vidoc is closed and no one could get to her in time. You know, you'd have to go way around town, probably on South Limit, I was told. You know, that's a lot of time that is wasted. So we're just pleading and begging you. And on behalf of the residents on the north side of town, and I also speak as a spokesperson, as president of the NAACP, we really, really need your help, and we deserve to be safe, too. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Green. Anybody else? Come on up. My name is Dan Welch. I live at 4191 South Kentucky. So I don't live in the city limits, but I do have rental property in town. Uh, recently, my wife and I, <clears throat> we have a fully electric home, and we were looking to get a, you know, like a Generac type uh, backup unit. So I called the Generac guy over in Knob Nostra. I told him I live in Sedalia. He said, I don't do business in Sedalia. But I'm, I made an appointment with him and for to come. And then there's another guy up in Concordia with Briggs and Stratton. I called him, and I, he told me the same thing. He said, I don't do business inside a city, in the city limits of Sedalia. When they both got there different times, I asked him why. He said, the city makes you jump to too many hoops, so I don't do business with them. And I'm here, I have a, uh, a window cleaning business, so I do a lot of businesses around town. And I'm hearing some of the same things as some of them. And I don't know if you all are aware of it or not, but I think it's it's a big problem. you got companies that don't want to come in and do business in your city, there's a problem. Thank you, sir. Anybody else have any other comments regards, regarding the 2024-2025 uh, budget? Okay, having heard that, I'll go ahead and close this portion of the... Oh, okay. So, Mr. Mayor, it, it may be a good time to make a clarification that these comments are specific to the past passing of the budget. Yes. There will be time later in the meeting to do general public comments. Yep, that is correct. My name is Diane Simon. I do not live inside the city limits. I'm 17449 Brockman Avenue, Cole Camp. I own property in, inside the city limits and just outside the city limits. A uh, question about the budget, and I, and you, I heard you say you, you, you probably will not be answering questions, but I wondered... Um, there is a, a, another item later in the uh, agenda on the uh, amendment of the budget for last year that's adding $972,616.50 to last year's budget, correct? Um, so is this year's budget based on the newly revised current budget um, is a question that I had, which has sales tax down last year, and then what are you proposing on what do you see for sales tax for the new year um just was a concern about that much being added to the budget this late in the year and then how does that work into the current budget that you're working with okay thank you Ms. Simon. anybody else all right going once going twice all right go ahead and close that public uh, comment portion. Now we'll go ahead and move on to the matter of the Midtown West 50 TIF plan. Director Simmons, you have the floor to lead us in this matter. Thank you, Mayor Dawson. Every year we give a report on the two uh, TIF districts in the city. Um, there's a requirement that those be held every five years, but we want to do it every year to let the public as well as council know how they're performing. The First TIF district I'll review is the West 50 TIF district. And if you'll remember, that was enacted in November of 2015. That is the district that we've seen the construction of Big O tires, Aspen Dental, scooters, and Slim Chickens. There is one remaining lot to develop at West 50 and Main and Oak Grove. 
This year, the assessed valuation added to the redevelopment project $402,630, and this figure will increase to $540,520 with the addition of Slim Chicken's assessed valuation in the 2024 tax bill. Do you have any questions on the West 50 tax performance or questions about the TIF? Does the council have any questions? Thank, Thank you. Sir. And then the second TIF is the Midtown TIF, also known as the Downtown TIF. This was an amended agreement from July 2nd, 2018. At that time, we added the Lamy Building Project. To review that project, the city was the developer in the following projects. The Trust Building, it is complete as far as the TIF is concerned. The Broadway Arms Demolition. The Ohio Streetscape is completed, uh, which additional streetscape identified going forward. Liberty Center, we will be reviewing submittals from them for payment on their project. And new businesses this year, we saw the addition of CSC Construction, Blur.ish, Artistic Isle, Silver Fang Crystals, to name just a few. The downtown has seen an increase in activity over the past few years. The assessed valuation added to the district since its inception is $3,959,170. And the pilots, those are the payments in lieu of taxes since inception, total $1,709,759, an increase of $263,277 this year. Any council questions regarding that, Ted? All right. Thank you, Director Simmons. Thank you. We will now open the public hearing with regards to the Midtown West 50 TIF plan. Please step to the microphone, state your name and your address, and you'll be allowed three minutes to speak with regards to this subject. Going once, going twice. All right. We'll go ahead and close the public uh, public hearing. Now we're going to go ahead and move along to the uh, approval of the previous session minutes. This is for the council meeting dated March 4th, 2024. Motion to approve. Second. Do I have any council discussion regarding the amendments? Having heard none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Meeting minutes approved. Now I have a uh, acceptance of the Citizens Traffic Advisory Commission minutes dated February 20th, 2024. Do I have a motion and a second? Motion to approve. Second. Any council discussion? Having heard none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes and minutes are approved. I have the acceptance of the Planning and Zoning Commission minutes dated November 8th, 2023. Do I have a motion and a second? Motion, motion to approve. approve. Do I have a second? Very good. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Now we have the roll call of our standing committees. Up first is Finance Administration. Chairman Marshall, you have the floor. Thank you. I have uh, nine items on my report tonight. First is a resolution and ordinance to amend the city budget. Okay, so we have a uh, resolution and subsequent ordinance amending the city's budget. Uh, I'll go ahead and call for the reading of the resolution first. Resolution 2084, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Sedalia, Missouri, stating facts and reasons for the necessity to amend and increase the city's annual budget for fiscal year 2024. I have a motion and a second. Motion to approve. Second. Any council discussion regarding the resolution that's on the floor? <laughs> Having heard none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Resolution passes. Up next, we have the ordinance amending the budget. I call for the reading of the ordinance. Bill number 2024-31, an ordinance amending the budget for the fiscal year 2023-2024 regarding final fiscal year 2024 amendments. Second reading. Second. Any council discussion regarding the second reading of this ordinance? Having heard none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passed. Bill number 2024-31, an ordinance amending the budget for the fiscal year 2023-2024 regarding final fiscal year 2024 amendments. Final passage. Second. I have a uh, motion and a second. Uh, any council discussion regarding the final passage of this ordinance? 
Having heard none, roll call, please. Bogus. Yes. Hiller. Yes. Cross. Yes. Foster. Yes. Bliss. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Oldham is absent and Marshall. Yes. Seven yes, one absent. All right, Bill passes. Next is an or ordinance authorizing the adoption of the city's budget. Any final changes can be made as we review the budget worksheet. All right. Uh, call for the reading of the ordinance. Bill number 2024-32, an ordinance authorizing the adoption of a budget for the fiscal year 2025. Second reading. Second. I have a motion and second. Any council discussion regarding the second reading? Having heard none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Bill number 2024-32, an ordinance authorizing the adoption of a budget for the fiscal year 2025. Final reading. Second. I've got a motion and a second for final reading. <clears throat> Council discussion regarding the final passage of this bill. Having heard none, roll call please. Hiller. Yes. Cross. Yes. Foster. Yes. Bliss. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Oldham is absent. Marshall. Yes. Bogus. Yes. Seven yes, one answer. <clears throat> My third item is an ordinance adopting a five-year capital improvement plan. This plan is laid out to accomplish the higher priorities set by the city council. All right, call for reading the ordinance. Bill number 2024-33, an ordinance adopting a five-year capital improvement plan. Second reading. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any council discussion regarding the passage of this bill? Having heard that, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Bill number 2024-33, an ordinance adopting a five-year capital improvement plan. Final passage. Second. All right, any council discussion regarding the final passage of this bill? Have you heard none? Roll call, please. Cross. Yes. Foster. Yes. Bliss. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Oldham is absent. Marshall. Yes. Bogus. Yes. Hiller. Yes. Seven yes, one absent. All right, bill passes. Next is an ordinance adopting the revised financial management policy. The Finance and Administration Committee has reviewed the financial management policies. This is done annually. The amendment focuses on the framework for staff to work within to classify any receivables as uncollectible. Okay. Call for the reading of the ordinance. Bill number 2024-34, an ordinance adopting revised financial management policy. Second read. Second. I have a motion and a second for second reading. Any council discussion? Having heard none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Bill number 2024-34, an ordinance adopting revised financial management policies. Final passage. Second. I have a motion and a second for final passage of this bill. Any council discussion? Having heard none, roll call please. Foster? Yes. Bliss? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Oldham is absent. Marshall? Yes. Bogus? Yes. Hiller? Yes. Cross? Yes. Seven yes, one absent. Next is an ordinance approving the contract with Economic, <laughs> economic Development of Sedalia Pettis County. As included in the proposed budget and reviewed by the council work session, the amount for contracted services for economic development is $140,000. And that's for the upcoming fiscal year. Okay, call for the ordinance authorizing the agreement. Bill number 2024-35. An ordinance authorizing an agreement by and between the cities today in Missouri and economic development of Sedalia Pettis County. Second reading. Second. I have a motion and a second for second reading and council discussion. Having heard none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Bill number 2024-35, an ordinance authorizing an agreement by and between the city of Sedalia, Missouri, and economic development of Sedalia, Pettis County. Final passage. Second. A we'll motion is second for final passage of this bill. Any council discussion? Having heard none, roll call, please. Bliss. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Oldham is absent. Marshall. Yes. Bogus. Yes. Hiller. Yes. Cross. Yes. Foster. Yes. Seven yes, one absent. 
Next is an ordinance authorizing agreement with Whiteman Area Leadership Council to help solidify the significant economic impact the base has on the region and also support their important work in the defense of our nation. This budget item is $5,000. All right, I call for the reading of the ordinance authorizing the agreement. Bill number 2024-36, an ordinance authorizing an agreement by and between the City of Today in Missouri and Whiteman Area Leadership Council. Second reading. Second. I have a motion and a second for second reading. Any council discussion? Having heard none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Bill number 2024-36, an ordinance authorizing an agreement by and between the City of Today in Missouri and Whiteman Area Leadership Council. Final passage. Thank you. Any council discussion regarding the final passage of this bill? Having heard none, roll call please. Robinson? Yes. Oldham is absent. Marshall? Yes. August? Yes. Hiller? Yes. Cross? Yes. Foster? Yes. Bliss? Yes. Seven yes, one absent. No passage. An ordinance authorizing agreement with Oates to help offset the cost of providing low cost transit services to the community. This budget item is $25,000. I call for the reading of the ordinance authorizing the agreement between the City of Sedalia and Oates. Bill number 2024-37, an ordinance authorizing agreement for services by and between the City of Sedalia, Missouri and Oates Incorporated. Second reading. Second. A motion and a second for second reading. Any council discussion? Having heard none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Bill number 2024-37, an ordinance authorizing an agreement for services by and between the City of Sedalia, Missouri and Oates Incorporated. Final passage. Second. I have a motion and a second for final passage of this bill. Any council discussion? Having heard on roll call, please. Oldham is absent. Marshall? Yes. August? Yes. Hiller? Yes. Cross? Yes. Foster? Yes. Bliss? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Seven yes, one absent. Next is an ordinance to approve the contract with the Scott Joplin International Rag Time Foundation for services for the annual Scott Joplin Festival. This budget item is ten thousand dollars. All right. Call for the uh, reading of the ordinance authorizing the agreement between City of Sedalia, Missouri, and the Scott Joplin International Rag Time Foundation. Bill number two thousand twenty-four thirty-eight. An ordinance authorizing an agreement by and between the City of Sedalia, Missouri, and Scott Joplin International Rag Time Foundation Incorporated. Second reading. Second. I have a motion and a second for second reading. Any council discussion? Having heard none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Bill number 2024-38. An ordinance authorizing an agreement by and between the City of Sedalia, Missouri, and Scott Joplin International Ragtime Foundation Incorporated. Final passage. Second. I have a motion and a second for the final passage of this bill. Any council discussion? Having heard that, roll call, please. Marshall? Yes. Bogus? Yes. Hiller? Yes. Cross? Yes. Foster? Yes. Bliss? Yes. Robinson? Yes. And Oldham is absent. Seven yes, one absent. And my final item is an ordinance to amend the city's personnel policies. Language has been written to update two sections. One is about the element, it is an element in the firefighter physicals that is no longer needed. The second is about the jury duty policy for compensation. Okay, we have two ordinances in relation to this matter. Call for a reading of the first ordinance amending the personnel regulations manual of the City of Sedalia, Missouri relating to jury duty, court appearances. Bill number 2024-39. An ordinance amending the personnel regulations manual of the City of Sedalia, Missouri relating to jury duty slash court appearances. Second reading. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any council discussion regarding the second reading? Having heard none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Bill number 2024-39, an ordinance amending the personnel regulations manual of City of City, Missouri relating to jury duty slash court appearances. Final passage. Second. I have a motion and a second for the final passage of this bill. Any council discussion? Having heard none, roll call please. Bogus. Yes. Hiller. Yes. Cross? Yes. Foster? Yes. Bliss? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Oldham is absent and Marshall? Yes. 
Seven yes, one absent. Now we're going to call for the reading of the second ordinance amending personnel regulations manual of the city of Sedalia, Missouri, relating to pre-employment physicals for firefighters. Bill number 2024-40. An ordinance amending the personnel regulations manual of the city of Sedalia, Missouri, relating to pre-employment physicals for firefighters. Second reading. Second. I have a motion and a second for the second reading of this ordinance. Do I have any council discussion? Having heard none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Bill number 2024-40. An ordinance amending the personnel regulations manual of the city of today, Missouri, relating to pre-employment physicals for firefighters. Aye. Aye. Second. I have a motion and a second for the final passage of this bill. Do I have any council discussion regarding it? Having heard none, roll call, please. Hiller? Yes. Cross? Yes. Foster? Yes. Bliss? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Oldham is absent. Marshall? Yes. And Bogus? Yes. Seven yes, one absent. That's all I have. Thank you, Chairman Marshall. Next, we move on to public safety. Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. Do we have the need for an ordinance? Uh, authorizing the city to participate in the Missouri Firefighters Critical Illness Trust and Pool. All right. We'll go ahead and call for the reading of the ordinance authorizing the city of Sedalia, Missouri to participate in the Missouri Firefighters Critical Illness Trust and Pool. Bill number 2024-41. An ordinance of the city of Sedalia, Missouri authorizing the city to participate in the Missouri Firefighters Critical Illness Trust and Pool and further authorizing the mayor to execute such documents as may be necessary for the city's participation therein. Second reading. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any council discussion regarding the second reading of this ordinance? Yes, I have a question. Uh, is this uh, deal uh, to do with uh, if a firefighter would inhale smoke or chemicals to uh, if endanger his life? Um, yes, is the short answer. The longer answer is, is there has been some presumption that, uh, that since firefighters have a higher incidence of cancer, there was a lot of, as I understand it, a lot of lawsuits over whether that was work-related uh, incident or not. And so what this cancer trust and the legislation, as I understand it, it basically takes that argument away and it says that, uh, that this trust fund is going to assume that it's job related, so they will pay, pay for it. All right. Thank you, sir. Chief Irwin, did you have any information you wanted to add to that? Um, the cancer trust covers 17 predisposed cancers that are affecting the majority of firefighters in the world. So uh, next trust covers that, those 17 uh, can. Very good. Next question. Chief. Chief. I've seen on television uh, there's a big lawsuit nationwide uh, for firefighters that maybe from foam. Mm -hmm. That is the AFFS foam. Um, it has PFOS in it, which is a cancer causing agent. Um, a number of fire departments. Ours included carry a number of gallons of PFAS foam or the AFFF foam. Um, not necessarily that we're involved in that that, that lawsuit, um, but the state of Missouri just reached out to us here a few weeks ago. Uh, the state of Missouri is working to basically take all of that PFAS foam away from us um, because really we have no way to dispose of it, and we don't use it because it is a can it is a carcinogen. So um, we have I think when I counted 28 five gallon pails of PFAS foam. Um, that the state of Missouri is, is at some point going to come in and take from us and just properly dispose of. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Any sure. other uh, questions? Uh, is there any reason why the police department shouldn't be under this? I mean, they get in uh, situations like this a lot of times, not by inhaling smoke or nothing like that, but I'm sure there's, there's situations where the police officer would get in a predicament like that. And I don't disagree with you, except this cancer trust is specifically was specifically built for firefighters. Um, so it only um, covers firefighters, and it's, it's firefighters that have to have five years of continuous on-the-job experience or service. So even even though we have a number of firefighters that have worked for us for a number of years, they still haven't hit, hit that five-year mark yet. So they, they will not still 
be involved in that cancer trust. It's only five years of service. Um, and unfortunately, it does not include law enforcement at this time. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Chief, doesn't it cover them even after they retire? Yes. So any any member any member of the fire department um, that retires in good standing um, basically has 15 years or to age 70. So if a if a firefighter were to retire today, they have 15 years that they are covered. So within from the time they leave service until that 15 year mark or age 70, if they come up with any one of the 17 cancers, they are automatically covered as a as a pre existing condition. Or um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, pre existing is not what I'm meaning. Um, it is a presumed um, cancer that it was on the job. Thank you, sir. Any other questions for staff? Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see, where were we at? All those in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. All those opposed? All right, motion passes for second reading. Bill number 2024-41. In ordinance of the City of Sedalia, Missouri, authorizing the City to participate in the Missouri Firefighters Critical Illness Trust and Pool and further authorizing the mayor to execute such documents as may be necessary for the city's participation therein. Final pass. Second. I have a motion and a second for the final passage of this bill. Do I have any council discussion? Having heard none, roll call, please. Cross. Yes. Foster. Yes. Liz. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Oldham is absent. Marshall. Yes. Bogus. Yes. Hiller. Yes. Seven yes, one absent. All right, bill passes. Uh, up next, we have Public Works. Uh, Chairman Oldham is not here this evening, so Vice Chairman Marshall, you have the floor. Thank you. I have three items on the report tonight. First is an ordinance authorizing an abatement order on consent for the North and Central Wastewater Treatment Plant. This AOC is an agreement with the Department of Natural Resources to bring these two plants into compliance and the timeline to do so. Okay. Call for the ordinance authorizing the abatement order on consent for the North and Central Wastewater Treatment Plants. Bill number 2024 An ordinance authorizing an abatement order on consent for the North and Central Wastewater Treatment Plants. Second reading. Very good. I have a motion and a second for second reading. Any council discussion? Having heard none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Bill number 2024-42, an ordinance authorizing an abatement order on consent for the North and Central Wastewater Treatment Plants. Final passage. Second. I have a motion and a second for the final passage of this bill. Any council discussion? Having heard none, roll call please. Foster? Yes. Bliss? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Oldham is absent. Marshall? Yes. August? Yes. Hiller? Yes. Cross? Yes. Seven yes, one absent. Next is or ordinance authorizing an, extent in the, an extension to the agreement for maintenance and management of our sewer plants. We have been pleased with their services and recommend extending the contract for four years at the current rate of $20,833 per month. All right, call for the ordinance authorizing an extension to the agreement for the maintenance and management of the wastewater treatment plants. Bill number 2024 43. An ordinance authorizing an extension to the agreement for maintenance and management of wastewater treatment plants. Second reading. Second. Any council discussion regarding the second reading of this bill? Having heard none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Bill number 2024-43. An ordinance authorizing an extension to the agreement for maintenance and management of wastewater treatment plants. Final passage. Second. I have a motion and a second for the final passage of this bill. Any council discussion? Having heard none, roll call please. Bliss? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Oldham is absent. Marshall? Yes. Bogus? Yes. Hiller? Yes. Cross? Yes. Foster? Yes. Seven yes, one absent. And the last item is an ordinance authorizing an, an extension to the agreement for routine on-site generator system checks and provide an ongoing mission. All right, call for the reading of the ordinance authorizing the extension to the agreement for on-site generators maintenance and repair service. Bill number 2024-44, an ordinance authorizing extension to the agreement for on-site generator maintenance, inspection and repair services. Second, second reading. reading. Second. second. I have a motion and a second for the second reading of this ordinance. Do I have any council discussion? 
Having heard none, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Bill number 2024-44, an ordinance authorizing an extension to the agreement for on-site generator maintenance, inspection, and repair services. Final pass. Second. I have a motion and a second for the final passage of this bill. Do I have any council discussion? Having heard none, roll call, please. Robinson. Yes. Oldham is absent. Marshall. Yes. Bogus. Yes. Hiller. Yes. Cross. Yes. Foster. Yes. Bliss. Yes. Seven yes, one absent. All right, bill passed. All right, the, uh, next we have community development. Uh, Chairwoman Foster, you have the floor. Thank you. I have two items this evening, the first of which is design guidelines agreement. Uh, as previously presented, John Simmons, um, community development director, was successful in obtaining a grant to offset 50% of the out-of-pocket costs to develop design guidelines for historic preservation efforts. The guidelines are intended to help interested property owners by identifying best practices in restoring the structures to preserve the historic significance, which in turn would contrib contribute to historic district des designations within the community. Likewise, these guidelines will help facilitate participation in various incentive programs that might be available to them. We received three proposals in response to our search for potential consultants. These proposals were reviewed with the Sedalia Historic Preservation Commission and they and staff recommended the lowest best firm capable of performing this work in art architectural history, design and sustainability services, LLC, and the amount of $37,153.46. All right, thank you, uh, Chairman Foster. A uh, call for the reading of the ordinance authorizing the Missouri Historic Preservation Design Guidelines Project Service Agreement. Bill number 2024-45. An ordinance authorizing the Missouri Historic Preservation Design Guidelines Project Service Agreement. Second reading. Second. I have a motion and a second for the second reading of this bill. Do I have any council discussion? Having heard none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Bill number 2024-45. An ordinance authorizing the Missouri Historic Preservation Design Guidelines Project Service Agreement. Final passage. Second. Any council discussion regarding the final passage of this bill? Having heard none, roll call, please. Oldham is absent. Marshall? Yes. August? Yes. Hiller? Yes. Cross? Yes. Foster? Yes. Bliss? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Seven yes, one absent. The second item I have this evening is a grant agreement and sub-award grant agreement. Uh, John Simmons, Community Development Director, was successful in obtaining an award of a Paul Bruin grant. The, the format of this grant is to allow for sub-awards to applicants through the city. The process for application and selection of projects has to be closely coordinated with the granting agency, and he has been working through this process. One of the last pieces that we need to put into place before we can make official awards is a sub-recipient agreement. Director Simmons has worked with the granting agency and our legal counsel to develop a template for each of these agreements. Staff recommends approval of such a template agreement. Okay. Call for the ordinance approving the grant agreement and sub-award uh, grant, grant agreement for the Paul Run Historic Revitalization Grant Sub-Recipient Projects. Bill number 2024-46. An ordinance approving a grant agreement and sub-award grant agreement for Paul Bruin Historic Revitalization Grant subrecipient project. Second reading. Second. I have a motion and a second for the second reading. Do I have any council discussion? Having heard none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Bill number 2024-46. An ordinance approving a grant agreement and sub-award grant agreement for Paul Bruin Historic Revitalization Grant subrecipient projects. Final passage. Second. I have a motion and a second for the final passage of this bill. Do I have any council discussion? Having heard none, roll call please. Marshall. I abstain. Bogus. Yes. Hiller. Yes. Cross. Yes. Foster. Yes. Bliss. Yes. Robinson. Yes. And Oldham is absent. Okay. Six, six yes, one absent, one abstain. Bill passes. 
Uh, in other business, we have uh, liquor licenses. We have one renewal. Call for the reading of the liquor license. Yeah, we have one renewal tonight. Amy Von Holton doing business as Aldi's Incorporated, number 88 at 3701 West Broadway for package liquor and Sunday sales. Motion to approve. Second. Any council discussion regarding the approval of this uh, liquor license renewal? Having heard none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. All right, do I have any uh, miscellaneous items for the city council or city administrator? Um, Your Honor, I would just like to announce that on April the 3rd at 3.45 p.m. at Lincoln Hubbard School at 7011 North Osage, uh, there will be a public meeting discussing placement of another fire station. You're welcome to, in, to come and join in. What was that? 3.45. I've got, or, go ahead. Uh, second anniversary for Hecker Center today. It was a wonderful celebration. Uh, the mayor was there, the governor was there. Sue made a big announcement, which I think I'll let Mayor Dawson, if, if not everybody knows, it's really cool. But uh, two good years at Hecker Center. Thank you all for your vote years ago. And uh, it's really been a good, good uh, addition to our community, I think. Yeah. Uh, Sue Hecker graciously announced that she would go ahead and donate the funds to uh, build a bowling alley there on the Sutherland site uh, and help build with that. So uh, we we're very thankful for that. We might go ahead and give her a round of applause. Right. Any other items? Yeah, I would just uh, uh, like to reiterate again, thank you all for all of your work on the budget and um, uh, all of your patience in setting through all of those long meetings as we discussed those and, and all of the, the great input and the great work. Um, I would also like to say that uh, I thought the, the festivities Saturday were, were great. The, uh, the parade and the bed races were well attended and, and uh, uh, good, good crowd for that and was a lot of fun. I did not stay for the pub crawl, but uh, uh, I hear it was it was okay too. <laughs> Very good. Anyone else? Yeah. On, on speaking of the pub crawl, I thought it was interesting. Uh, we were in line to go out to the Hayden Farm to Albury Barber, and uh, Bobby was driving her Corvette, was leading the possession, and it led all the way from Main Street all the way back to Broadway. And what was pretty cool down here where the where the guys were outside in, in amongst the pub call were having their drinks. When she went by they tipped her hat and held a drink to her. So the community notices great people and she was definitely a great person. Anyone else? All right. Having that, uh, having heard none, we will go. ladies and gentlemen, we now arrive at the Good and Welfare section of our agenda. This is a unique opportunity for residents of our beloved city to directly address our city council. Before we begin, I'd like to remind everyone of the framework of this segment. Each speaker is requested to step forward, clearly state their name and address, and will be allotted three minutes to present their statement. Please note this is not a session for dialogue or debate with the city council, nor is it a period of questions and answers. It is the time for you to make your voice heard, for us to listen, and your statements to be entered into the public record. We ask that all remarks be kept respectful and pertinent to community manners. Thank you for your participation in helping maintain the decorum of this process. So we'll go ahead and open the podium up. And if we'd like to step up, go ahead and state your name and your address. My name is Gary Lobal. I live at 821 South Arlington Avenue. As for welfare, I think attention should be made on that Washington Street Bridge now. As a former railroader, I know what trains do when they come through town. They can have trouble. If they get delayed, they have crews now that are reduced. It takes that much longer for them to find the trouble. And every minute that that bridge closed, you're fighting disaster. Thank you, sir. All right. Go ahead and step right up. I mean, don't be shy. We won't bite. Um, my name is Kevin Lugin. I uh, live at 408 West 22nd Street. 
I just want to let everybody know um, I'm also a reporter for the Windsor Review, and we're expanding coverage into Pettis County. So if there's any stories that you think would be of note, it would be helpful to report. Again, my phone number is 913-710-8877. My email address is kevinlugin at yahoo.com. Again, anything of note or importance you think the citizens of Sedalia, the Windsor Review cares about, so please let us know. Also, I serve as president of the Pettis County Pachyderm Club. I do have an invitation out to David Goodson um, and Councilman, uh, I'm sorry, Chris, Council, uh, Councilman Marshall and Councilwoman Bogus. Anytime you'd like to discuss matters relating to the second ward, as well as if you, if you think there are other people from the community that would be helpful to be part of that. Anytime in the coming months you'd like to do that, please let me know. We'd be happy to schedule it. Also, I'm working with the Missouri State Attorney General. We'll be having a session on the Sunshine Law. So if anybody wants to know how to access public records, again, you know, just look for that on the announcements. Randy Kirby's KSIS calendar. Um, our Pachyderm Club meetings are, are on there weekly. We meet Fridays at noon at the Heckert Community Center. So again, we're just looking to help make this a better community. What about the fourth ward? And uh, again, you know, we'll be happy to first. Huh? Well, I, I mean, if you had a Washington uh, Street Bridge situation, but I think they're first yeah, in line no, right I, now. I, I so thank you, Mo so, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lynch. All right, come on up. Hello, my name is Ernestine Fletcher, and I live at 421 East Howard. And I was wondering if there was going to be any road work done on Howard Street and other streets on the east side that are in desperate need of attention. Right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Anyone else? Come on up. I'm Harry Hoford, 1408 South Barrett. And, you know, I've been around here a long time. Been downtown, out in the county. You know, I had some ladies come into my shop today and we were talking, and they were really concerned about the bridge right here, the Vidoc. And my thing is, I'm about really tired of the bickering between the county and the city, because it don't make us look worth a hoot. And it's all of us that you guys bickering makes look bad. Why can't we talk fire department to fire department to county? How come we can't tone out the, the county fire department out here just on the other side of Main Street and work together. And if there's a fire on this side, we can get the guys over there and wouldn't try to get that big trucks here. We can get them from right up there at the county. Why don't we work to get that instead of having everybody call names and throw stones? I mean, it's getting kind of ridiculous, in my opinion. We're a great community. We all love it. We're all generous. The whole community is. But when we got excuse my language, pissing matches going back and forth to see who's the big dog. Let's get it taken care of, treat everybody right. Let's not have certain rules for certain areas and certain rules for certain people. And let's just, there can't be no shaded. It's got to be black and white. There can't be a what if, you know. And I think you'd get a lot more people in here. Because you had to call this one to get all these people in here. Wouldn't it be nice if it was filled up every week? Well, the only way we're going to do it is if we can't find some way to work together and get this thing taken care of. Because right now, it's just killing all of us. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Holt. All right. Who else? Come on up. Hello, my name is uh, David Goodson, 1640 Hedge Apple Drive. Hey, uh, just Harry's a tough act to follow, by the way. But, uh, just uh, this is Diane made some great points tonight about the budget, and as we get these three minutes to talk to you guys, we don't get to hear back from you all. You know, I'd like for you to entertain the idea of us getting to have some dialogue with you guys instead of just looking at us. You know, we come and speak, and we don't 
we don't know. So I'd like for you to enter, entertain the idea of actually having some open dialogue at, during these meetings to where we could find out because, you know, we'd like to know about the $900,000 budget question. I think that was a great question. Um, Ms. Bogus, I, I thank you so much for the concerns of the fire department. I share those with you. I think we really need to look at that, and I hope to be at your meeting. Um, the Washington Street Bidock is a, a big concern. Harry made a great suggestion about the county fire. Um, you know, I just think, uh, and I think another gentleman made a comment about uh, some contractors not wanting to work in Sedalia doing generator work. Well, I can tell you personally, I am working with one of the very best engineering firms in the state who personally said to me, working on my project, we don't care if we ever do another job in Sedalia, Missouri. And that's the kind of thing we've got going out there in the construction world, and it really isn't good. So I'd urge each one of you to really consider the decisions we're making and how we're managing our city, our code enforcement, and getting buildings built because we are running businesses off. And, um, you know, I want to see Sedalia grow and succeed. I think everybody here does. So I'd ask you guys to consider how we get that dialogue open in an open public forum with you. And, um, again, thank you again for the fire station. That is truly a big concern of mine. And I appreciate everybody being here tonight and uh, participating in our city government. It's, it's really great to see a full room. So. Thank everybody for being here. And by the way, if anybody would like a vote no sign, I have some with me for the longer council terms to see me after the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Goodson. All right. Who else? Following up? Garrett Smith, 305 South Ohio. Just uh as really really interesting tonight going through all the ordinances and such i noticed that they were proposed all the ordinances were proposed multitude of them and then finalized without any time and there's no space in between public uh discussion or weeks in between there has that always been the case that the ordinance was presented and then it was finalized and never opportunity uh, for uh and, and then if there is concerns from the uh, public when the ordinance is made they can't say anything till after it's all done at the end and it's already finished I'm just wondering has that always been the way the, the this this is done just again but I don't see I'm just talking and I'm probably not getting any feedback but anyway just thought I'd bring it up all right, thank you. All right who else come on up Hello, my name is David Covington. I'm 21, 2601 East 12th Street in Sedalia, Missouri. Um, I had a question concerning about the, uh, the water mains that's been happening throughout the roads throughout the, like, what, since January, February, this is what, March. So I've been getting alerts saying what, what roads we can go, what roads, what roads we can't not go to, and what have you. So uh, what, what is our goal for our infrastructure here in Sedalia? Because, uh, when you come into the town, the first thing you want to see is the beauty of your home. And then, you know, when I come to your house, it's the first thing you want to see. And uh, one of the things I've been noticing is that the infrastructure, and that should be like one of our number one things, like if they were talking about the, the bridge and the roads and so forth, uh, what is our goal and what are we going for? What goal we have that's moving towards that direction to, uh, to revitalize our roads and infrastructure uh, so we can prevent having these water mains um, happening in our, in our in our community, and that's that's one of my main concerns there as well as uh, as well as the feedback. I think also with piggyback on what the man was saying before is that uh, we're looking for feedback. What are your goals? What is what is what is your guidelines? Where is the money going towards? When it goes towards the infrastructure, if so, and uh, that's one of my main concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Covey. Did Dave? Did you say your address? Yes, twenty six zero one. East 12th Street. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Come on up. <clears throat> I am Paula Walter, 
I live at 2610 Plaza Avenue. <clears throat> I'm a native civilian. I've now lived here full time for seven years now. And I have two real issues about what Sedalia looks like. One of them is the third world country that Sedalia is east of the post office. <clears throat> and I'd like to know if there's any kind of city plan, any kind of development plan in place to address what that part of Sedalia looks like. Because it's, it is just, it is, it's, it's, it's horrendous the way it looks. And then the other, my other big beef is, having lived here my entire life, is to travel um, south of Broadway, or uh, yeah, south of Broadway on um, either Kentucky or Ohio, and to see how these two main thoroughfares at one time were super nice streets to travel and the degradation that has occurred on those two streets. And so I'm just real curious more than anything about um, the third world aspect of East Sedalia and what's going to be done about it, if anything. All right. Anyone else? My name is Janet Mazansky. I live at 723 East 5th Street. And I've talked to the mayor a few times about just exactly what she said, our neighborhood. I lived there, I raised my kids. I lived there uh, 20 some years, never locked to my door, raised my kids, it was a good neighborhood. Now, all the time on my cameras, I see nothing but young kids with their backpacks on roaming the streets through the middle of the night. At five o'clock in the morning, one morning I had a guy standing, he had pushed my security light so it wouldn't come back on. And he was out there holding up his little crack pipe or whatever it was. And so uh, we went out there and asked him what he was doing on our property. And he said, oh, good morning. Uh, I don't think you all realize how many people roam the streets here in town at night. And another thing is when you come into town in, from the east side, what can you be proud of? I mean, if you're driving into a city and you're like, oh, this would be a nice city. Not if that's what you see when you first drive into town. Everything has been focused on the west side. Nothing has been focused on the east side or the north side. It's all south and west. Why can't we give a little attention over to the east side and over to the north side so people can be proud of where they live and be proud of their properties and clean them up. And another thing is, people are getting their properties took away from them because they can't remodel. You know, they're elderly a lot of times. Um, my husband and I had a house, that house sat empty for 20 some years plus. We bought this house and we was remodeling. We put a new roof on it. We was painting, we was doing the whole nine yards. City comes through and tells us we have seven days to get that place cleaned up and it's a challenge. We both work. It's a challenge. We're still working on this house. We It was gutted when we got it. So, I mean, I think if we come up with a solution, you know, to, to clean up the east side, and I mean everybody, don't nitpick on just this person over here or this person over there. If you're gonna pick on somebody, pick on the whole east side, and then we need I don't know if we need more officers out at night or what, but it's ridiculous. I used to go to work at Black & Decker at five o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, there'd always be people roaming up and down engineer. Well, you know, when you got people out at that time of night, they're up to no good. So we really need to think, you know, come up with a solution for the east side, for the north side, not focus so much on the west side you're going to have nothing but trash and it looks like trash. I'll just say it, you know, give right. people something that they can be proud of. Bring some businesses back to the east side. When I was a kid, there was all kinds of businesses over there. There's nothing. Now we get, we get the new center on the Sutherland's property, which is going to be really nice because that used to be a homeless camp. It's cleaned up now. 
that I, I would not even let my granddaughter walk to school. I wouldn't let her walk up the Katy Trail or Broadway because of that. But we need to bring some, get some pride back in our area. I mean, I used to love the east side, and I came from the west side. All right, thank you, Janet. All right. All right, anybody else? Hello. My name is Nancy Sims Van Buren. I currently live on Broadway, but I'm in the process of moving back to the north side of town. I have family members that still live there. I grew up my whole childhood on the north side of town, surrounded by nothing but family. I'm here because of the concern, and you've already heard it numerous times, about the bridge, about the fire department. The thing is, the fire department has never been there, and we really need it, but the bridge has always been there. I know Sedalia because I've been here all my life. In an emergency, if you can't cross that bridge, and anybody that pays any attention to the news knows that employment is bad and everybody needs help, so we have less conductors and the trains are getting longer, they reach from one end of town to the other. If they stop, we have no access, not just to the fire department, but to any first responders. They'll have to go clear to 65, come all the way around, and come in from the north. You're looking at a whole nother five minutes, and that can be somebody's life. Especially if you're talking about somebody who can't breathe. The reality is overdoses happen way too much. Children get hit by cars, and we're waiting 10 minutes for an ambulance, a police officer to come down 65 and around and come up from the north. Somebody's going to die. That's all. Thank you, Ms. Thank you for being able to address you guys. <clears throat> my name is Al Kruger, and 218-765, I wrote my address, but I've got properties in town. And uh, so I guess my question is, or my concern is, is um, regarding the, some of the city codes and city ordinances, why trying to keep the properties clean is not, it's not a big thing, but we've had some vagrants stay, so then you drive around and you find it, so then you contact the law officers and they come over, but then they don't make them remove their trash or nothing. I mean, they just, they just, you know, then they got X amount of time. Um, I've had them, I've sat there before up to two hours, and part of the time they were doing jumping jacks. So then if you go to try to throw them off your property, then I'm told by the law enforcement that I'm breaking the law. And so at one point I called Mr. Dawson and he sent a crew over there to pick up the trash. So I'm like, man, I waited two hours and now we've got a bunch of trash thrown all up and down. And, you know, it's not only is it time consuming, but I was having to try to go to work at that point. And so I just wonder if we could get something in place to where if they, if they're, if they dump a bunch of trash or they do a bunch of that, that they're responsible for picking it up and then give the, the law officers the, the teeth to make sure that they pick it up and put it in a trash can. I mean, a lot of them will go and, and they go down the alley or down the way and then they drag stuff out of the dumpster and drag it back up there. And then someone's got to figure out what to do with it. You know, we've had tires dump stuff like that. And a lot of that stuff costs money to get rid of. And it's not that you, you don't want it. I mean, you, you kind of need to be able to keep the place clean and we need those rules. But at the same point in time, we got to have a way to give some of the landowners or the, the homeowners or different ones a way to make sure that they have some a ways to ensure of being able to do it, you know, um, that they said that you can give them a, a no trespassing order, but then you, if you look around, well, then you see them under the viaduct or under that bridge, or you see them, you know, up in another, you can put all the lights up in the world, but it seems like there they are right back there again doing it. Um, you know, they're trying to climb up on stuff or trying to tear stuff up or tear stuff down. 
and then it costs money to try to put that back. And I just hope that we can come up with a way to give the law enforcement some teeth so that we can try to really deter these people from doing that because it, you know, it hurts our city in the long run. And that, that's all I was trying to do is come, have you guys come up with some sort of a good idea and then to give the law enforcement teeth. I'm not sure what that is. You know, uh, you hate to arrest them because it's just going to cost us money to put them in jail and beat them. But at the same point in time, we got to do something to try to deter it, you know, because it seems like it's getting to be worse over time instead of better. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thanks. All right. Who else? Hello, my name is Becca Lestrada, 608 West 3rd, and I would like to put a request in. Years ago, I know, once a month with the uh, agenda, there would be a list of the expenditures of the whole month. And also, there would be the credit cards that the department heads had and used and needed and I would just like to see that reinstated for transparency's sake. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. All right. Do well. Come on up. Don't need to be shy. Going once, going twice. All right. I will go ahead and we'll move along on the agenda. Uh, and I will now entertain a motion to move to closed door meeting. Motion to adjourn for closed door meeting. Second. A motion to second in council discussion regarding adjournment. Having heard done, roll call, please. Robinson. Yes. Oldham is absent. Marshall? Yes. Boggess? Yes. Hiller? Yes. Cross? Yes. Foster? Yes. Bliss? Yes. This conference will now be recorded. Marshall? Yes. August? Here. Hiller? Yes. Cross? Cross. Cross? Here. Foster? Here. And Bliss is not here. Yeah. All right. Uh, you call it a night? I think he was just, maybe it was the bathroom. Oh, we're waiting on Bliss. Val has been sick. Okay. Maybe he's checking on her. I've got a question. I've got two questions before we start. Number one, what is the status of the bridge repair? I mean, what what are we talking about? We we have uh, contacted an engineer uh, yeah. through the um, 
all through the state. MoDOT has a has an emergency repair. I think it's BEEP or something like that. But anyway, it stands for emergency bridge repair. Uh, that engineer is um, working on what is it going to take to fix it, and he's going to bring it back. Um, I think it's three options that I think I, I know I can remember two of them. Um, one is, is uh, to do a quick fix. Uh, another is, is to no, do a complete repair it. or complete replacement. And when, is, and when do we likely have those? Uh, I don't. Matthew, do you remember off the top of your head when they thought the the bridge engineer thought he would have his report back? It was like a couple weeks. If, yeah. So, I mean, we're pushing them as quick as we can. Okay. And I've got one other question. I've seen I've seen the chief's presentation. It's it's wonderful. It tells you everything you need to know. What you need to decide is when you put a fire station someplace, you want it to do. Maximum coverage with the rest of what's there. You want it to be where the fires are, the maximum fires. He's got all that information, but it's not just geographic. It's not geographical in the sense, well, we need to put one here because we don't have one here. So you have, you have to kind of decide uh, what's important to the location and how much you're going to spend otherwise. Okay. You have to come back into open. Right. You have to come back into open. Or do you, we did. We just. Oh, I didn't hear the vote. We did. We're waiting on it. We did. I don't. We're waiting on Blitz. No, you're waiting on me. I think. Mm. Is it roll call or is just selecting you? We'll act in you, we'll act in you but okay. I marked when you came okay. in. Okay. We had a qualm. Well, good evening. I'm sorry it's so late. I'm only going to hold you for a couple more hours, so it'll all be all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, First off, I'd like to start this presentation, and I apologize for not having it on, on PowerPoint because I, I thought um, <clears throat> I think that this presentation should be given at some at, at a future council meeting, so that everybody that was here earlier would have I think they would have graciously appreciated this information. So um, I think that we need to do this either at the next meeting or very closely thereof. Um, uh, so what you have in, in front of you is um, a couple a lot of pictures. Um, the first one picture that I would like for you to bring into is, I'm sorry, <clears throat> before I get into that, you guys have to understand I am not opposed to putting a fire station on the north side, okay? Me nor anybody in the fire department are against putting a, a fire station on the north side. Ultimately, the problem that comes with placing a fire station on the north side, which we will go over in this presentation, is that then that forces us to have to put a fire station on the south side simply by the number of houses that we uncover. Okay, so it is not me that wants and doesn't want to put a fire station on the north side. If, but if we do that, then our hand is forced to putting a fire station on the south side simply by the number of houses that we, un, we uncover for fire protection. Okay, so when you go to the north side, all of the same things that the north side um, residents have been complaining about with trains on the railroad, not being able to cross the vice Washington Street Viaduct, basically in verses to the southeast section of the community. We have a very long response time. It's almost 12 minutes for me to drive normally over there. It's about 11 and a half minutes for me to come in to um, Boonville and Engineer, or not, or Boonville and the Katy Trail. So the, the distance is, is, is time consuming. So if we go to where we're gonna go, or to the north side, we are forced to put that, and that, that, that's going to take funding for stations and personnel to put in that. Um, so the first, first picture that you have here is um, the current response boxes, if you will, for both the central fire station and fire headquarters. Those diagrams, the blue diagram and the, dark, the light blue and the dark blue, represent 1.5 road miles or four minutes. It's a four-minute response time by road miles. NFPA says that you can tra traverse 1.5 road miles in about a four minute period. Now, this is our best estimate because if you go down Broadway, you can be a little faster. If you go down a side street that has dips, it's gonna be a little slower. So you have to take this with a grain of salt. This is not an exact science, but if you look at the dark purple, that's headquarters, or dark blue, that's headquarters. Light blue is the central fire station. Okay, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna skim over these first, these, these next couple ones, simply because when we get farther into them, they come into play. Also, you also need to understand when we lost the Hubbard Park location, we did not just quit. 
We did not go, well, we can't have that. We're not going to be there. We spent, if we spent a day, we spent six weeks trying to figure out a good place to go on the north side. Our best options, these are a few of the options of many that we came up with. The first one, which is in yellow, is the rail spur just um, west of Anthony and Buckner Housing Authority in that area. And you can see what the 1.5 or 4, four minute response time is for that location. If you go to the next one, which is the green color, that is if we place it in the, in the cemetery um, <clears throat> out a little farther east. And that is it's 1.5 road miles or four minute response. You also notice that fire headquarters isn't changing. If you go to the next one, it's kind of pink, but it's kind of hard to see. That is going somewhere on North Ohio. This was actually taken about North Ohio and North Missouri, where the old Tallman property used to be is kind of where we, 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 we based that off of. So you can see the response box for that. When we get to the next page, which is basically a, 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 an overlay of what the rail spur and what currently Central Fire Station covers is where I think it gets interesting, okay? So if you look at the yellow and the blue, when you go to the yellow, all of the blue on the south side, south and east end of that, those are houses that we uncover by moving north of the railroad tracks. We also see that it causes a split just kind of in between the central fire and the head fire headquarters location as well. If you move to the next one, which is the cemetery, you notice that it gets bigger. Um, not so much on the southeast side, but we do lose a majority of the south. And then we, we, we widen the gap, if you will, in between the two, two response districts. If you go to the next one where it's the North Ohio overlay, you can see how much exactly of the south, southeast, and southwest of the city that we lose and we uncover for residential houses. Again, I am not opposed to putting a house, uh, putting a fire station on the north side. Um, but an interesting little fact, and I'm gonna pull it back up because I, I, I lost it in my notes. Um, if, you, if you will just appease me for a minute. Can I interject one yes. thing on this one that I thought of after I saw the presentation on Thursday is also we, not only houses but schools. Schools? I saw Smith Cotton being so far to the southwest. Smith Cotton, St. Valley Middle School. Um, and, um, out, of, out of this one with headquarters central and north of mm -hmm. right? yeah. yeah. so, so that's another issue, not only just rest of so, this, but I think the hospital is always covered. Yeah. So some things that I want you guys to think about before we move on in this is that um, from Park East, north of the railroad tracks, there are 677 houses from GIS. If you take that same and you go from Engineer East, south of the railroad tracks, there are 1,243 houses from that, from that side. Um, for Council Roman Bogus, I pulled the second ward fire reports for the last five years. In the last five years, we've run 97 house fires in the second ward, 97. Of those 32, we're on the north side of the railroad tracks for 40% of the calls. 60% of our call volume is on the south side of the railroad tracks, still in the second ward, okay? I thought that I wanted you to have that information because the third, if you look at the next one, that is the three station model that we approached um, almost nearly three years ago um of bringing up and that that was that was the hubbard and the centennial park location we just put i just put it in there so you had a, a feel of how we were overlapping coverage and how we were protecting the city if you go to the next one which is a pretty colorful colorful one <clears throat> this is an overlay of the city limits the current run boxes for both central and fire headquarters and that is all calls that we run it's a heat map of all the calls that we've run in basically the last five years okay so you can see where most of the majority of our calls fall right within our, our first, first few response. If you go to this next page, these are all of our medical calls. What do the colors represent, Chief? They're a heat map, so the redder they are, the more calls that we have in that location. And the greener they... The greener are, the less, are the less number of calls that we have in that area. So green's like zero to five and... No, uh, uh, yes. I'm not sure that's the exact okay. no, no, the numbers that are used, but if there's no green or anything like that, we've run zero calls in that area. So yes, I would say one to five is the okay. cut over, cut, cut off. So then if you go to the medical calls, which is the next one uh, there at the top, you see where the majority of our medical calls are in, in the heat map type thing of where, where we run a majority of our calls. And then the last one over the last five years, this is our heat map for our residential house fires. 
Um, these are only um, 111 building fires. Am I correct? That's what we, we based it off of. Or 111 building fires. These are not vehicle fires, trash fires, car, or, um, or anything else, grass fires or anything else. These are simply residential structure fires or garage fires, any kind of building fire. So watch which, what I want you to pay particular attention to is, is that the little symbol in the middle of that is about where a central fire station is at. So you re if you can recognize, then we are parked basically right in the middle of our, our residential fires. So by moving the fire station, again, I am not against it. I will do it. If you, if you so choose to have me do it, I will do it. But we are moving the fire station away from the majority of our house fires. Um, and then again, we are opening them up, opening up the south, southeast and southwest side of the city um, to us being uncovered from a fire station in that four-minute response. So I really want you to pay attention to that, that we, I think we are right where we are. If we, if we want to go to a three-station model, if this body so chooses to send us to a three-station model, we will, we will figure out where to put fire stations. But what we looked at is, is that you're looking at about $6 million for a fire station, so you would need two. We would need to hire with the six that, that we have proposed in the budget now um, that is grant dependent. With those six, we would need 12 additional people, and you're talking 18 people that we'd have to hire to staff that third fire station in the squad. It's just over a million dollars a year in salaries and benefits. So the question comes then, how do we pay for that? And that's, that was one of the things I took into consideration when we, we changed, when we changed back to going to the two station model is that can we afford three stations? Can we afford the staff for it? It had nothing to do with where we were placing that locations or, or not wanting to station those locations. It is long, longevity and sustainability of the city. That is a million dollars in staff and salaries that you're going to have to pay every year. And it only goes up every year after that. So I would be more than happy to spend a million more dollars in staff. I just don't know where we're going to cut to get it there. I really do not. So with that being said, that is the reason why and the statistics why we decided to go back with Central Fire Station. Um, we left ourselves open that if anywhere north or south or southwest or southeast, that those, if there was an explosion north or an explosion southwest or south um, of homes and things that we need to protect, it gives us room to be able to react to that and add a third station at that point. So that is the reason why we've, we've gone to the two-station model, and that is why we've decided that we had looked at, at, at putting the fire station behind the current central fire station. Now. Again, if that is not something that this body wants to do, direct me what you want me to do, and we will try to figure it out. Chief, I just want to add in that meeting, in our public safety meeting, when we were discussing this, a couple other things that you had said. When we had that open meeting north, north, there was people there that lived in the third ward, and when we brought up that the third station would be in Centennial Park, they said the same thing your people said. Uh, no, that ain't gonna happen. Partial for kids, not fire trucks. I believe it was what the quote I was told. A fire department or a fire station in Centennial Park. And then the second thing you might might bring up about how many calls have you've ever done when the tracks. So I, I reached out to former fire chief um, uh, Greg Harrell. I reached out to former deputy chief um, Don Meyer, um, simply because of their, their tenure with the department and their, their longevity with the department. I looked through our fire reports um, back as far as I could go. We have, a, we have a tick mark in our fire reporting that says gives us a delayed for re or reason for. I don't, have any re I don't have any reports that say that we were delayed due to a train or anything like that. Um, Speaking with those two, um, two gentlemen, um, they don't recall us ever being delayed due to a train um, or the viaduct being out. Now, that's not saying that it hasn't happened. It's just saying that I can't find it. Um, so with that, I know, but ultimately here is the, the issue. The viaduct is, is out, yeah. and, and, and it could happen. I mean, there could be a train, and I do not want to discard or, or make light of Councilwoman Boggs' concerns and the, and the people that were here and their concerns, because it is a concern. Right. At any point, the train, a train could be on the rails and we are delayed in our response. That is a fact, it could happen. The fact that I can't find it has already happened is not saying that it hasn't already happened. I just can't find it. 
and, 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 and it is what it is. I can't find anything in our reporting software. I have not gone to the city clerk and asked to go through uh, the microfish because I'm not sure I can search for that on microfish. I think they're just, they're just copied reports. So with that being said, we have looked into that. Um, we know that if there is a fire on the north side right now with the viaduct being down, we have an engine company that's already going to Main Street, is taking the, the, the main, main road, unless they are told by the engine one crew that the, rain, the, tr the, the tracks are clear, and then they will come down Main Street. So we just have them going that direction already. So I am open to what you guys want to discuss, um, but that is the reasoning and, and, and the data that we have that shows the single, single station model. Okay. Excuse me. First of all, thank you very much, Chief, for taking the time and, and putting all of this together. I, I understand. I, I totally understand what you're saying. But we also must look at the fact of, and we, we don't want to live in fear, but mm -hmm. right now we are in fear because of that viaduct being down. So now we come to, okay, so how quick are you going to open up that viaduct? Are you going to tell me that viaduct is going to be opened up within the next three to six months? Then, okay, I might ease up and say, okay, I, I know what you're talking about. But if you're going to tell me that viaduct is going to be down for another year, year and a half, maybe even two years, then I'm coming back at you and say, okay, so we're supposed to sit over here with our butts open mm -hmm. because we have nothing here. And, and, and I, I see your point, but if we were to break ground tomorrow on a fire station, we're 18 months before we get a fire station built over there. And 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 I'm and and ma'am, please, I am not trying to argue with you. I really am not. Oh, I'm just no, saying that no, no, no. from the construction people that we've talked about, this is an 18 months. Am, am I correct? And that's what the, our, our architect said. So, unfortunately, the problem is is that we are in a conundrum right now that nothing that we do is going to fix anything quickly. I mean, I I, I don't know how to answer that. And 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 to be truthful, I I don't know. I don't know what we do right this minute to fix it. And I, I, um, I appreciate you saying that, you know, because there isn't a quick fix to this thing. But I, I do have to go back and refer back to when we had the other meeting mm -hmm. uh, over on the north side. The thing that was drilled and drilled was ISO. ISO, we've got to do this because of ISO. ISO telling us we've got to go north, we've got to do that. And now all of a sudden, it's not that important. And so that's where the folks are saying, wait a minute, you told me that you needed to come over here because of ISO. Mm -hmm. And now you're telling me, well, not, it's not really that much of a big deal, so we're just gonna stay where we are. It can't be both ways, it's gotta be one way or another is the, the, the thing that's coming back to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, I can't answer you because I don't know. With, with all due respect, ISO is still very important to us. And, mm -hmm. and yes, we are taking points or hits in our ISO simply through our response districts and our deployment. We take hits from ISO simply because we don't have, we don't have enough to put 14 people on. So what, we've, what we have found with ISO is, is that we can maintain where we're at. We were trying to improve, and that's why we wanted to go to the three and ISO ISO, the ISO men would have loved to have had seen three stations and the personnel that go with it, the response signs flowing to, to some of our outskirts. It is important, and ISO is important. But we, we have maintained through the years with what we're at. So it is all a matter of what you guys want to do. I would love to have the third station out there because we would take, we would gain a significant, I think we would gain a significant amount of points in ISO for our response districts. I absolutely think that. I think that if the way we had it set earlier, regardless of if it was in the parks or close, our coverage district to our downtown was a little overlapping. Our response time to be able to get more trucks to the core of the city, to the north side of the city, to the south side of the city, would have improved our response times greatly throughout the city, as well as having secondary trucks getting on scene quicker. So yes, to your answer, we, we were basing a lot of this on ISO because of what the points we could gain from it. And we could still gain points from it. The problem is, is that if you, I don't know how we, I don't know how we fund it. I, I really, that, that, that is one of the things I would absolutely love to do it. And it would benefit us. It'd benefit the department. It'd benefit my personnel because they would have more people on house fires. They would have more people to run medical calls and, and be ready to run on the house fires. ISO would absolutely love this. 
but ISO is, is also going to see that we're, we're what we have, and we will lose points for our response district, our response time to the outlying uh, outlying call. And, and so you're right, but it's just not as easy as this or that. It, it, it is a combination of both. And then tonight there was a gentleman that was here uh, that was speaking about the county uh, station that's over there. Mm -hmm. Over on Radio Road, Road. Right. Station and, 7. Yeah, and they were saying, is there some kind of a way that we can combine or come together mm -hmm. so that we can say, look, yes, that that's going. Because the people don't really understand that if that's county and you're in town in Caldwell, they're not coming. They're not coming. Correct. So they're saying, so what can we do? You do have something over there. So what can we do to join hands and join forces with what's there that would help to cover that area? So nothing short of, of having county staff a fire station. Um, county has five personnel that, that staff Monday through Friday, basically eight-hour days. So any fire that happens after five o'clock or six o'clock, whenever they work, those stations are unmanned. So you, if we get a fire call, even if we had an automatic aid agreement, they would be coming in from their houses to fill that station to respond over. So we're not really gaining anything because that station is not staffed in the evening times or at night. I mean, we would gain, anything, we would gain something from eight to five, but that would be the only time that we would gain anything from that station because they are a volunteer fire department. Right. Is there a way that when they're not manning it, that we would be able to man it with a few people? They, I, they don't, they don't have like living quarters that I'm aware of, okay. and all of their bays are full of trucks. Now, I mean, they could probably move them, but that's gonna, that's gonna mess with theirs. But then you still run to the same issue. Then, if we go out to the Radio Hill Road, and and I see where you're going with it, and it sounds like it would be feasible, but then. Are we going to staff Central Fire? Are we still going to keep an engine company there? Because that's a long way to get to the southeast side of town. Again, staffing it, how to pay for that staff, how to, how to work with the county fire to, to let us use their station as a 24-hour station until we can get something built, that, that's up for you to decide. And, and still, we have to have the personnel to do it. And... You know, right now we're we're still waiting for a safer grant. It opened. We, we, we're getting. We're finishing up the finalizing the, the application. That's still a couple months out before they even make those decisions. So we're still months out before being able to see if, if that that's going to affect our staffing. Now, if we wanted to go to if you if this body so choose, we could ask for 18 on the safer grant, and we could staff it all at one time. But that's only going to buy you three years. Well, I I. I... Again, I understand that this is, is a difficult decision. It is very difficult as to what to do, but I also want the entities that are that are trying to figure all of this out to also see the other side. And and I I know you do. I know you see the other side. So please don't take it personally. And, and I'm not, but I. I, I but the, the thing is, in living north of the tracks, whether it's northeast or whether it's northwest. The thing that the people are hearing, and the thing that the thing, the thing that the people are feeling right now is, we're not covered. And the reason why they're saying that, I think more so now than ever before, is because of that bite They're in terror right now, because I personally experienced one of those trains sitting on the track, and we have no control over that. Mm -hmm. But I had, to, I had to get over on the south side. The viaduct is closed, so I went down to Emmett. Mm -hmm. The train was even down there. So now I'm turning around. I'm coming back this way, all the way over the park, because the trains now, the, uh, they're, they're longer than what they ever been because of the shortage. And, and, and they don't and, disagree. You know, and so we're saying, oh, oh, my God, well, how would they get to us? So then it's being said, well, we would just go down Broadway and come across the, the, um, the overpass over on 65. Mm -hmm. 65, yes. Over, mm -hmm. over, over, over 65, and then we'll head back north after we get across there. And we're like, are you kidding me? So we don't mean any more than that? That you're going to take that kind of a route and say, what's the best that we can do right now? That's and unfortunately, it is the best that we can do right now. Again, I understand. I hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But it, to me, it just looks like we we got to figure something out. We, we just have to. We've got to figure something out. 
and putting nothing over there is not figuring out what to do over there. Okay. Can, you, can I ask you a question? So, I mean, one thing kind of comes to my mind is number, number one, we're not just talking about fire protection, we're talking about, I, I think, more importantly, ambulance, or as importantly, an ambulance. Mm -hmm. uh, medical events. And I, it's a pretty small group. Uh, I think we, could we possibly um, work with MoDOT, work with an engineer? What, I, my, oh, first off, what, what's the difference between the weight of a squad and a, a decked out ambulance? Is it, is it, is There's it, not much difference, Tom. Okay. So, you know, we can't get a ladder truck across there, but Correct. we could pretty quickly um, get engineering to say these are the ways that we can, I've looked at it, we could go in there and start welding and scabbing and maybe get MoDOT to approve that lower weight mm -hmm. for ambulances and, and, and for a squad almost immediately. That way you could say to people, I mean, I'm, I'm not almost immediately, two to three months, three to four months. If we could get engineers in there right away to do shoring, I mean, pretty quickly we can pour another concrete foundation. We can put I beams up to shore the ones that are failed. Are you talking we about could, doing something with the viaduct? Is at least for that? emergency response, we could go across that viaduct. Not for everyday travel, but if there's an emergency and we spend. If you open that viaduct up, you're not going to stop. No, I think Tina. Well, I'm not saying open it up. I'm saying we don't even necessarily have to publicize it, although we're in public session. But as long as ambulance and fire know that it's been shored, we may be talking about one or two events to save one or two lives, but, but people would know that I guess we would have to make it public because we want people to know that you're at least able to get a squad and an ambulance across there. And once you move those barricades that are there, do you honestly believe that the there's got to be a way? I love you. There's got to be a way that we could at least. I think it's got to work both ways. Yep. Yeah. Well, then we say cars only. I mean, we put a, a much reduced load limit and then we enforce it with CD. But there's got to be a way that we could kind of quickly get you guys back to the point where you feel safe. We can certainly pour concrete and put in steel and shore things pretty quickly. We're going to kind of cost us money. But the other alternative is 18 months for a fire station. Longer than that, probably, I'm guessing, to completely repair the vital. Is there is there a way that you can come back and, and give me numbers on keeping Central Fire Station where it is on Hancock, keeping 16th Street where it is on 16th Street, and putting some type of a satellite something across on north side so we're not reducing coverage okay. in the area that you so my question is, is do you want that staff with a squad or do you want it scrapped with an engine so so i will i will say this and 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 um, our squads are going to be used for medical. They are not, the pumps aren't rated. Only one of them has a pump on it and it's, it's not rated for structural firefighting. It only has 300 GPM pump. So that is not, NFPA would, I mean, we're not a OSHA state, but so a squad wouldn't provide, squad fire, wouldn't fire, provide fire protection. I, I misunderstood. Yeah, that. squad would not provide fire protection. Now, it could get a crew over there to effect a rescue. If, if somebody was in their house, something well, built, they could, rescue they could do a rescue. The yes, they could, they could effect a rescue. Down. Um, but the issue is, is that we wouldn't be able to put fire out until an engine got there. We, I mean, you could, you could throw a, the 300 gallons of water that's in the, or 250 gallons of water, 300 gallons of water that's on there, you could throw it in there, but you wouldn't be able to advance that in as an attack line. Um, if, if, if one of our guys got hurt or killed or, or whatever, um, we would, the liability of that would just be unfathomable. Um, because it's not rated for structural firefighting. It's, it's the, the pump on it is rated for grass fires, little trash can fires, those kind of things. So, but it would get a crew over there to, um, to affect a, a rescue while they waited on the engines. Because if there's a life in danger, um, every member of my department, we, we, we don't bring a hose line with us. We, we make an unprotected attack to try uh, an unprotected rescue 
Um, we go in without the protection of a hose line. It's the second new engine company that generally pulls that hose line to start putting out fire. That's what my guys do. So it wouldn't be any change except they wouldn't have the protection of the engine and, and, and an additional two other people there to, to protect them. So, yes, it would still be dangerous for us, but it could be done, yes. But well, I don't want to endanger you know, our no, firefighters at all. But, but then you I have, have to also bring up the, the, the another scenario that there is a senior complex over there. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I work there. I got 39 I seniors there, you know. So they're saying, okay, so we're still not going to get anything over here. They're saying, so we still have to wait or what have you. And like I said, the questions are difficult. They absolutely the answer are. Answer is even harder. And, and standing up here in front of you guys is, I, is uncomfortable. I need to interrupt. I'm going to go ahead and get a motion directing staff, and then we can go ahead and vote on that uh, with regards to bringing back the satellite deal. Yeah. So you make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, yeah. Uh, council, council discussion regarding the motion on the floor. Can you All those favor? Single engine in the. In the I mean, I know it's going to be a larger structure, more manpower. So you you could build a two bay station. It really, it's not the station or the or the equipment that goes in it. It's the staffing that I've got to put in there. So if you're going to go with an engine, it's a minimum of three staff per shift. That's nine people. If you go with a squad for medical calls, you're looking at at, at six people because it's a two man squad. Problem that you run into then is is that there's no still no fire engine over there. So you at least need a three person engine company. To, to, to put over there, and you can do it with a two base station. You know, simply so you you can expand with a squad or another ladder company or something over there later. You wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to put forth the money to build a station that you're going to have to expand later, or you we outgrow yeah. quickly. So I'm willing to do whatever you want to do. Ultimately, it's the staff that we need to put in, and how and 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 how you want me to go about getting that staff and pay for them. That that's ultimately what it is. You're looking at nine plus the six that we that we're hiring for the squads that are coming in now. So you're still looking at 15 people that you're going to hire. Do I have any other further council discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? All right. Okay. So what I'd like to do is just go ahead and let's let, we've got some information, let's let this marinate. We'll bring this back to the uh, next meeting on April 1st. Then we're going to go talk to the NAACP on April 3rd. And, and and did you say 345? Mm-hmm. Yes. It's 330. No, the NAACP meeting starts at 330. It's board only. After that. Oh, I'm glad was, you told me that because I'd have been early. <laughs> well, you could have said my office. It'd be all right. But no. Okay. I, I heard you say that. I was like, man, I shut that calendar out, but I thought it was 3.30. But yeah, okay. They start their meeting at 3.30 with their board members. Okay. And then after that, they go into a dinner. Yeah. yeah. And they're asking, they asked me to tell people that about 3.45. Okay. That's what they asked. I think the, uh, you know, I'm sure you did. But the engineer on the bridge needs to understand how critical this is. This has got a real time element to it. It's not, well, we'll get to this and then we'll do this. This needs to be done like yesterday. And that is the real problem. Yeah, this the bridge is the real problem. All right. The, uh, we'll go ahead and let the information marinate. We'll, like I said, we'll bring it back here for first. And uh, What's the number of And if I could, Councilwoman Bogus, you wanted me to look at where the satellite station would go on the north side is, is what you asked me to look for, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Do I have a motion to go ahead and adjourn? Do I have a second? Second. Any council discussion? Having heard none, uh, I believe we need roll call on that. No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? We need to adjourn. Thank you, Council, for your time.